Hey guys, I'm Lee Taylor, that's the 2021 uh, Master MX-30 Electric, and this is a right lane review. Electrification is the next big step in the automotive world, and every car maker wants to make a good first impression. It needs to be bold, but not too much, fun, but not too unusual. So striking balance progress is key. Progression for Mazda comes in the form of this brand new MX-30, and it's showcasing really Mazda's new design language and ultimately where we think Mazda is going to go. The MX-30 is offered in a plug-in hybrid, as well as this full battery EV version fresh insides, and a little bit of CX-30 meets RX-8. So how's the MX-30 once you get it out on the road? Well, it's actually a pretty well packaged little car. I mean, you are dealing with these whole sort of RX-8 style doors. So you have the front doors are normal size and what they call freestyle doors. We call them suicide doors back home, um, where you have to open the other direction to get in and out. So some of the practicality is a bit funky, but it works pretty well. I mean, my dog can get in and out pretty easy. The car drives really well. You can see easily out the front of it. Um, the back's a little bit cramped with the C pillars being a bit of a coupe roof line, which you kind of get over it. It's got plenty of great parking tech, surround view cameras, surround view sensors. Um, it's all the normal safety tech. So forward collision warning, rear cross traffic alert, brake assist, uh, blind spot monitors, all the normal things, adapt cruise control, stop start assist, everything you can think of that Mazda has in the game, but they've put on this um, EV model of the MX-30. And that's because you only get one trim level in the EV, which is the Astina, which is the highest trim level you can get in a Mazda product um, on this particular vehicle anyway. And it gives you a really lovely place to be. I mean, the interior of this car is just gorgeous, and, but it just feels really special in the hands. Dynamically, the car is light on its feet. It's easy to maneuver. It's easy to place. It's no sports car. It's not really designed to be a sports car, but as with every Mazda, it has a bit of a sporting feel to it. The, the steering is actually a good weight. It's rather accurate. Um, there's not a ton of feel on the front end, but again, this is not a sports car, so you're not too worried about it. The engine, or sorry, excuse me, the motor, <laughs> the motor in this car actually feels a bit more powerful than what the paper says it is. So they rate this electric motor at 107, I believe, kilowatts and about 270 newton meters of torque, which is not a ton of power out of an electric motor, particularly when you think of things like the Kona and then like Tesla, for example. Even their smaller Model 3s make a lot more power than that. But it, it does the job. It makes the car feel sprightly. And with any electric car, that instantaneous torque that you can get means you can zip in and out of traffic and zip in and out of a gap pretty quickly. So if you need to go there, you just put your foot down and the car just surges towards the gap. It's a nice, it's a really nice feeling because it means the car feels eager all the time. Now, it's not a high, strong four-cylinder edging you on like old you know, Mazda Speeds of old, or I believe they were called, um, uh, they had a special name here in Australia, which eludes me at the moment. But the car feels good. It just feels like a, a, a good car. And it's hard to fault dynamically if you think of it as a nice little SUV crossover hatchback. It does let us down in the range department, though. I mean, you're only getting a rated 200 Ks of range out of this little electric motor and the battery pack, which is not that much when you consider that cars like the Kona have double that range, which means the Kona can actually go cross country. But if you're not going to take the car cross country or you're just using it for shops or maybe a short trip to work now and again, it actually works perfectly fine. And charging is pretty easy too. It is fast charger capable, so you can get from 20% to 80% in about 35 minutes on a 50 kilowatt DC fast charger. On an AC charger at home, you can get to full in about five or six hours, I believe, and then it takes about eight hours to get to a full charge at home in a three-point socket. So overall, it's pretty normal charging experience. So if you have somewhere to plug in at work or maybe you only need it for a few times a week, it's actually a nice little car to have. And it feels special. It doesn't feel kind of, I guess, common is probably not the right word, but you don't, like you see, you see Kona's around all the time. And yes, the Kona electric looks different, but it still can look quite pedestrian or, or normal because they're quite, they're quite popular low SUVs. Well, the MX-30 is only available as the EV and the plug-in hybrid, so it has a bit more of an exclusive feel to it. And one of the coolest things that Mazda's figured out how to do is they've made this little bespoke noise that it makes for the engine. So 
if you put your foot down the accelerator and the engine or I guess the, the motor, like I said before, the motor, not really an engine, no combustion here, it, it will actually make this kind of thrumming noise, kind of like the Taycan does with Porsche, but a little bit more um, believable, I guess is the right term for a Mazda product. Like it's not, let's, let's just see if we can hear it. So we're just gonna pop along here and give it a little bit of gas and we'll see if we can hear, hear it. So it sounds kind of cool. It's kind of like sci-fi. You may not be, if you didn't hear it, well, we'll get to it later. But so this, this little noise that Mazda has engineered in the car actually makes it feel a lot more, I don't know, engaging because it's now just, it's not just that normal EV experience of a quiet car when cruising, but it kind of gives you that sci-fi thrum that makes you think, oh, there's actually a little motor in there doing some work. And it increases as the RPMs increase and it just sounds right. Cool isn't the right word because the Taycan sounds cool, but the this little MX-30 just sounds well thought out and right because our sense of speed comes from noise and if the car's completely quiet it's really easy to get a ticket overall as a package the car feels really special and unique and yes it's a bit pricey you know 65 i think around there to start before you add on roads which is a bit high for a car with 200 kilometers of ev range but overall if you want something special it's a great little car it's typical Mazda. How's the interior on the MX-30? Well, to start with, I think it looks absolutely beautiful in here, and Mazda's made everything in here out of renewable materials. So all the leather is faux leather with no organic processes involved. There's recycled fabric all the way around throughout the cabin, and it's beautiful and easy to touch. There's cork used out, so you actually have cork in the center console here on both levels, and it just, it looks absolutely stunning. The only bit I don't like is this little plastic bit here, but I'll let it go. From the driver's position, you're actually in a nice, comfortable seat, a beautiful Mazda wheel, which feels beautiful in the hand. I really do like Mazda's steering wheel design overall. All your normal controls. Paddles on the back are for your region braking, not for changing gear. You have a partial digital dash with a beautiful HD display in the middle and two analog on either side. And then you also have the normal Mazda infotainment unit in the middle. Now the infotainment unit is starting to age a little bit. It's starting to show its gray hairs. And you do have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but you still have to plug it in to get those to work. In the middle though is a new touch screen with a full climate control all at your fingertips and you also have a button and below that is another tier which also gives you an actual PowerPoint so you can plug in your phone with an actual three-point socket if you want and there's all sorts of really nifty little cubbies all the way around the cabin and it makes the car feel really different and special and it's a absolutely beautiful place to be How's the back seat in the MX-30? Well, to start with, it's a little bit tight. My knees are actually up against the seat that's set to my normal driving position, and my legs are as well. But my toe room's okay, and my head and shoulder room's actually pretty decent as well. So if you're a little bit smaller person, you'd be perfectly fine. The fit and finish back here is absolutely beautiful. That same leather and the recycled fabrics all the way around. It's just a lovely, lovely interior in this car. You also have a set of cup holders and an armrest, but getting in and out of the car is a little bit tricky because you have a big front door and a suicide style rear door, kind of like the old RX-8, which is kind of a cool touch. How's the boot in the back of the MX-30? Well, there's actually plenty of space back here, and it's mostly on par with the CX-30. The seats do fold down if you wanna get some bigger items in, but you lose out on some space underneath the load floor because that's where the batteries and the Bose amp are. But you also have a nice little bag for your charging cable.
So what's the tops, bottoms, and final verdict for the 2021 Mazda MX-30? Well, on the bottom are a few quite key things. One is the fact that infotainment tech seems a little bit last generation, so it feels a bit old. The range isn't as good as you would expect from an electric car now in 2021, and it comes at a bit of a premium price. So those two things together is a little bit of a miss for me. So what's on top for the MX-30? Well, there's actually a lot to like with this car. It's a fantastic piece of kit and it feels like a Mazda, so it's quite good in hands, the chassis is quite nice, and in this electric model, it feels quite zippy. And the interior as well is beautiful. I absolutely love this new design language in the interior, and it has my absolute full approval. And all those things mean that this car actually feels quite special. So what's my final verdict on the 2021 Mazda MX-30? Well, its range isn't that great and the price is a little bit high. It does feel quite special as an overall package. So if you wanna ditch the oil and petroleum and see Mazda's next progression, Check it out. To start with, it's a little bit tight being this coupe style thing. My, oh wow, what are these? These are knees. These are my knees. Didn't know that. 